Well, hi, good morning. Thanks so much for coming and joining me here in my shop on the last day of November 2022. So, um, yesterday I spent the whole my whole uh, session in here fiddling around with this capacitor, which I still haven't soldered in. I've soldered in one side of it and I left the other side so I can do this thing and turn it into a little bit of a switch for some more experimenting. I thought about what I did yesterday and probably I really didn't get down to it, which is this is supposed to suppress the noises coming in on the, the uh, power cord uh, from the house electric system and, and wherever else. And I don't think I really set this up to find that out. So we're going to do a little more experimenting with it. But first, I'm going to revert back to the resistance measurements I didn't complete and complete them for these last uh, few tubes. So that's what I'm going to work on first. And I think I'm just going to start up with this tube and just work my way through. And if I find something that's out of whack, then I will turn on the video and show you the out of whackedness. Well, the fact is I didn't get anywhere. The very first reading is not, is not panning out. So uh, there's a cathode resistor right here. It's a 1000 ohm resistor. at 1.3 anyway so that's you know that's a 30% off I think that's enough to change this the sky's in the cathode that's a pretty important position relates to bias on the tube so I'm going to change out that one okay well just a fraction of an inch over from there was this resistor I put in this 330 but it turns out I read the chart wrong got a little confused shouldn't be a 330, should be a 470. So I put a 470, big, big 470 in there. Whoa, okay, let's see. We'll just keep going here because uh, I'm getting a lot of bites on my line. So I'm on my way to putting a polarized plug on this radio, but I haven't done it yet. I think I'm gonna leave it the way it is. I'm just gonna figure out which one of these would ideally be the hot one, the one you'd want to go into the hot slot on your outlet. Uh, the reason being that in the radio, one of these two is going to the switch. You want the hot one to go to the switch. So when the switch is open, the hot line is cut off. So that would be this terminal here, my meter hooked up. Which one are you? That one. That's the one we want to plug into the smaller part of the outlet, but not this. This is isolated, so it doesn't really count. Let's take that off there before I forget. Right back on the ground. So yesterday when I was experimenting with this capacitor, I when I connected it, the radio seemed to produce more noise. Now, that didn't sound like interference type noise, that sounded like atmospheric noise. I'd gone ahead and hung this wire on here as a short antenna. That's probably not the smartest move, in fact. What I really should be doing is shorting out the antenna and reducing the amount of radio signal coming in through the antenna so that we can better detect the amount of radio noise coming in on this wire, if there's any. And is there other ways that we could detect the amount of noise coming in here. With that thought in mind, I'm going to go have a little coffee break and ponder that. Okay, you see my SDR at the top there. This is the antenna to the SDR. Put my finger on it. You can see what's going on. So, you know, how strong are those noises? Well, from experience in my shop, they're way stronger than uh, signals coming in on wire antennas. Um, way stronger. So that, that's a blasting amount of noise. You'll notice it's a little higher at the, the higher end here. Don't know what it is. Don't know what causes it. Like you, probably. I have, I have run around my house with 
little radios trying to figure out where's all this noise coming from and I just go squirrely doing that kind of stuff so I think this is coming from things in my house computer radio in my shop maybe and I'm getting into the power system and they're just everywhere radiating out of the wires in my house that's what I think you cannot escape it what a disaster for those of us who like to listen to, uh, to radio so what can we find out from this um, I mean we've already got a pile of noise coming into the radio first let me disconnect the antenna right from the radio here we'll just see how far down it goes hopefully it does now what are those things that are left behind you got me so because of this very very inexpensive SDR it's quite possible it's it's inherent in the SDR so you know that's part of the problem here is how do you figure out where the noise is when you're in such a noisy environment noises coming from all over the place let's introduce that uh, noise that comes from my lights here I used, I'm just gonna there it is nothing nothing showing up at all I think it's a higher frequency thing that comes out of these uh, out of these lights when they turn the power up too high okay um, this will be a little tricky then if we want to try to figure out what is coming out of an outlet and I'm already suggesting this whatever's coming out of an outlet is just flying around here already how would I ever spot it um, now off camera I did plug in a, uh, uh, a wire into here and I clipped my lead on it with a capacitor and I fooled around you know what I couldn't find anything of great significance beyond what's there already uh, coming out of here so now this doesn't plug right into an outlet this goes through a uh, isolation transformer who knows what effect that's having there's piles of wiring around here on my bench uh, all going right down next to the computer below here so yeah who knows how am I ever gonna do this I mean, the, the objective here is to experiment with this capacitor putting it on taking it off and determining if it's having any effect noises coming in on the power line and theoretically it should but practically sometimes things work a little different how am I ever going to get a grip on this that's a really good question um, you know I do have this radio <laughs> uh, you know this one does stuff you can listen to this guy um, I don't think the SDR is going to help out much Let's go way up in frequency and see about my uh, my funny light. So we're at 11 megahertz now. You can see the noise distribution is quite different. I put my finger here and it's still receiving. It's quite different. So this, this becomes a really crummy dipole antenna. At this frequency, this is a little small. But it's just here in my shop. Let me hit the lights here. And we'll see what comes up on the... Uh... Okay, overload the lights. Underload, overload, underload, overload. Well, I don't see anything happening there now. We certainly heard something on the radio. Uh, let's go up a little higher. 21. What's happening up there? 21 megahertz. Nothing happening. Okay. Uh, so maybe I need to couple this a little closer with the lights. The lights are right here. So let's just do something crazy here. We're going to do this. Now as soon as I short these out, I expect a pretty good drop. Okay, 21 megahertz. Noise from the lights. So is, is that, that the, the noise from these lights isn't really a radio signal flowing through the air. It's caught up in the power supply. Okay. Um, and, and being transmitted back into the power lines. Yikes. How, 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 how would I ever come to grips with that? I mean, we certainly heard it on this radio quickly get another radio there's one 17 megahertz it's tuned up to okay, just 
just sitting here. Activate the light interference. And here's thing. Now, this is a battery operated light, uh, uh, operated radio. Is that right? The voltage radio right up near the light. Going to the light. Nothing. That's, I'm a little surprised. Let's put 10 megahertz in here. Well, it just doesn't do anything on the radio here. Hmm. So, this red wire is the radio's uh, antenna. Let me clip it right on over here. Ooh, that's kind of noisy. You have to hold it here. Okay. So that's now clipped to the outside of this. Nothing. Well, this is uh, surprising to me. Very surprising. Does this mean the noise is really contained in just the electric system in my house from these lights? Does that mean the lights no longer make the noise? Wow, I, I really, uh, I really expected a response there. Well, now what? Well, we'll just go right to the big radio and we'll start using it. Well, I'm gonna get rid of the SDR. Proved to be not so useful here. Okay, I've plugged the radio into a regular outlet, uh, not through the isolation transformer. I plugged it in, paying, paying attention to the polarization of the plug, even though it's not a polarized plug. And I believe I have arranged it so the hot wire is here, and I'm going to prove that. Because uh, you know, even though I never make mistakes, I'm going to prove it. So this is on that AC, this meter. That should show a big, big voltage. This should not. Oh, you know what? I plugged it into an outlet that's not switched on. <laughs> okay, let's make sure the radio is switched off here. It is off. Okay. Okay. Switch on the outlet. There we go. Let's try this again. Funny what triggers the light to come on this meter. Very funny, haha. Ha. Okay. Once again, we're going to ground over here. So I'm got one meter lead on a known grounded spot, and this one should show 120. Very good. And this should show nothing. And this should show nothing. Very good. All is just fine. So I've arranged it so the power is coming into the radio on the switched line switches off that means the uh, 120 volts is uh, getting all the way up to the switch up here and that's where it's dead ending I can't if I switch the plug around the whole story is different so I don't want to do that what I do want to do is turn this on now now I'm going to turn this on after having made some minor changes I've got it plugged right into a full power outlet that a smart move? Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. Okay, lights are on. Radio's on too. So we're on all the red settings. All the red settings. Volume's down. And we're on band. speaker come off? Oh, the speaker came off. 
Okay, reconnecting the speaker here. coming out of this radio. Uh, one of those higher pitched sort of hums. There's a low hum too. What happens? Wow, well, there you go. So I would say uh, without this capacitor in place there's a 60 cycle and maybe a 120 cycle sort of rectified thing happening. I don't really know to make that higher pitched buzzy hum. The difference between what's going on here and the chassis. And, and that difference is showing up in various circuits. If I bond them with this capacitor, there can be no difference now. And the noise is gone. Is that, is that the noise? that this capacitor is in charge of. They always talk about, you know, the book talks about RF interference. Let's carry on now. I don't have an antenna on here, which is why the radio is quiet. Otherwise, because if I put on an antenna, you can hear something. So no antenna. So you went the antenna there, and the volume turned up. You, you really can't you know, you know something's going on, but it, the actual effect is covered by the extra sound. That's when I hung that uh, clip lead. What was I thinking? I wasn't thinking. That was yesterday when I did that. I can even short this out to get rid of it more, but it seems pretty, pretty gotten rid of now. So now, now we can hear more clearly the effect of this guy. Okay. So let's introduce the uh, noise from my lamps here. It just, it just doesn't want to do it today. Why is different? Nothing is different. How come? Oh, I got the volume turned down. Let's turn it up. Let's try again. Right, and it was on the higher bands. It was on the higher bands that this was working. So we'll go up there. Capacitor is not connected. Let's connect it up here and see what happens. Same thing. Uh, power supply or power line hum without it. Hum gone when you connect it. What about this RF interference thing? What would happen? What happened to my lamps? They were so useful. So I'm not picking up the interference on the little radio or on this one now today. What is different? I've got this plugged into a... Uh, oh, here we go. I've got this plugged into a regular outlet. Is that the difference? What's happening, Peanut? Oh, yeah. Okay, let, let me switch the plug over to here. And we'll see what happens. Or maybe I would rotate the plug in the outlet. Can I do that? Can I rotate the plug in the outlet? Do I have any equipment connected here? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, let's do that. We're gonna rotate the plug. This is gonna reverse things. It's kind of scary, right? Okay. Pump seems a little more. Wow, that is quiet. That's just gone completely quiet when I do that. Let's rotate it back. Okay. Huh, it's gone just as quiet this way. Okay, into this outlet. Now, 
maybe the, come on out of there. Maybe the isolation transformers actually pick up a lot more noise. Let's flip it on. Well, here we go. Doesn't sound any different. This is interesting too, you know, by working on radios in an isolation transformer. But maybe their behavior in a regular outlet is different. Now, I've, I've experimented with this many, many times. Uh, just coincidental experiments. Because in the end, you plug, after you finish working on a radio, you got to plug it in a regular outlet at some point. Never noticed anything. Sounds exactly the same to me. It's quiet. It's a little hard to hear the buzz. No use rotating the... Uh, I don't think there's any use. Right, I put it in one way, it's a slightly lower pitch tom. But gone in any case if you do this. Don't know what it means, just make an observation. So I'm going to do the same thing and listen for that low hum. I'm going to plug this in to the regular outlet here. Okay, first of all, the proper way. I hear a low hum. And now, the shock working this plug here at some point. And now the improper way. Well, that sounds quieter. subtle. Don't know what any of this means. Huh. Okay, so I don't know if you can hear this or not, but with the plug reversed, so the high voltage is not the switched line. The ground is the switched line. I get a greater noise reduction. I, think, I mean, my, my furnace is running now. My cat is, uh, well, he's given up on me already. Why would that be? Yeah, very hard to hear now because of the low sound of my furnace. How do I know for sure my outlets aren't backwards? Nah, they aren't. That's quieter. So, I mean, if you've read enough about these radios now, you will have come across instructions that if you plug something like this, a guitar amp, a whole list of, you know, unpolarized two-pronged tube equipment, small stuff usually, you plug it in one way and you get a bit of a hum, you can turn the plug around and plug it in the other way, you might get rid of the hum. But this seems to be the opposite circumstances here. So which is better? Well, 
with this arrangement when you switch off the radio. The line stays high through the transformer. AC voltage. What is going on here? This is plugged in a regular outlet, so we should find it here, but not here. If we find it here, find it here. So this is on one side of the winding, the other side of the same winding. From here, it's heading up to the switch. At the switch, the switch is open, and that's where it ends. Well, that's kind of the same thing as the other way around, isn't it? Common sense says uh, put the switch on the live line. Slightly less common sense says put it on the other line simply got a little more energized in the radio. It's got no current flowing, a little more energized in the radio. What would be the problem with that? Why, why would I not? So I'm going to put this pr uh, uh, polarized plug on here. I've got to decide do it this way or do it that way. And now I'm a wondering. Well, when I looked in my favorite book here, uh, in the last video, I found some information about what they call C17. C17 is the capacitor that we're interested in here. It's this, this guy here. But guess what? There's another paragraph. In fact, they've got a whole section here on it. And I'm going to read through it here. So here we go. Troubles common to the line filter condenser. Line filter condenser C17 is a paper tubular condenser whose usual capacity is 0.1. With the usual rating of 400 volts, voltage breakdowns are uncommon. The condenser may open, and this would theoretically cause greater interference from line disturbances. They say theoretically. Why would they say theoretically? cause greater interference from line disturbances. An open line filter condenser, however, may cause entirely different effects. Owing to its position in the circuit, the receiver chassis is grounded through the condenser C17 by the lighting mains. Lighting mains, that's, a Brit that's British talk, by the power, or here in Canada we might say uh, the hydro lines. Uh, condenser C17 by the lighting mains, one side of which is grounded. So, yeah, I, I've heard of this before, that this guy really gives the radio an opportunity to utilize the ground that exists in the electric system. The receiver installation may have no ground at all or an indifferent ground. An indifferent ground different ground. In, in which case C17 takes on a new function, that of grounding the receiver. This explains why reception, they have in brackets, absence of hum or noise, is often improved by reversing the plug on an AC receiver installation. 
It also explains why a tiny spark or small shock is experienced when connecting a ground to a receiver. When C17 is open, its grounding function is gone. Okay, wait a minute. So are they saying this shock and tiny spark thing is because of the capacitor? I think that's what they're saying. But then, uh, considering, well, so what happens if it's open? Grounding function is gone. The most annoying manifestation of this is known, look, they spelt the word wrong, is known as modulation hum. So I'm familiar with this. That is, the receiver does not hum when making a hum check. The hum comes on as a station is tuned in. There will be no hum between stations. The standard procedure for modulation hum is to check the ground and condenser C17. Bridge the condenser with another condenser or like value to check if it's open. Okay, so there's a couple of weasel words in here. Um, this explains why reception, absence of hum or noise, is often improved by reversing the plug. It also explains why a tiny spark or small shock is experienced when connecting a ground to the receiver. Because basically, the capa capacitor is hooked up to the line. You might as well grab the end of a capacitor and shove it in the live side of the outlet. And then stick your foot on the ground and see what kind of see what kind of shock you get out of that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> do not do that. Okay, modulation hum. So there's some things here I'm hearing that you may not hear on the video. Maybe if you're listening with headphones, good headphones, or you have big speakers, maybe you can hear some of this stuff too. But there was definitely a hum coming and going. It was not tuned into any station, but I have heard this intermodulation hum problem. And I had a discussion about a year ago with another fellow who, who does this kind of work who had encountered a strong intermodulation hum. I actually read him parts of that book, but not that paragraph another spot in here. There must be a spot written about intermodulation hum in that book. Okay, so uh, where does this leave us? It doesn't really clarify um, what I should do here. Should I follow the standard procedure? Standard procedure is capacitor is connected on the other side of the switch. But you see, this is a non-polarized plug, so they're not suggesting... You know, what they're really suggesting here is that this doesn't work well when the plug is in the wrong, the wrong way. So you need to have the plug in the right way. Now, if you're fooling around with this kind of stuff, you, you know some of this. You know, you know all of this. Because of, because of the obvious effects of reversing the plug and having a voltage on the cabinet and all this kind of stuff. Just th thinking about it. I'm just sitting here thinking about it, and I shouldn't do that on videos. Don't be thinking on your videos, Jim. Um, I, I would feel more comfortable if this capacitor were tied back to the neutral or the grounded side of the power system, even though that presents a bit of hum. What about this modulation hum? I wonder if we can experiment with that a little bit. I have to tune in at a station and then see if there's a hum that comes in when the station's tuned in. Well, it's pretty easy to experiment with. I mean, I've got this thing set up here like this. Uh, yeah, let's see if I can do that. We'll try that out. It's a little, it's, uh, you know, it's in the afternoon now. Maybe I'll get a little better on the short wave bands. Hey, 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 no coffee for you. Okay, so here's my plan to try to hear intermodulation hum, which may be present when this capacitor is not connected. My plan is to use a signal generator. Hey, 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 oh, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> that cat is, the cat was walking across my keyboard here just about stop the video from running. Okay, I'm gonna send an unmodulated signal of some strength over here. That should quiet the radio down. We should be able to hear the hum if there is a hum. 
maybe maybe not. I don't want to hook up the ground from the signal generator uh, to the radio over here. That's why I've done this very tricky technique here. Okay, I think everything is uh, ready. I mean, we're plugged in a regular outlet, and I've plugged it in the appropriate way. So the hot wire comes in and goes up to the switch. Supposedly that's the proper way. Okay, so I just flip the switch, and we're on. And the radio's tuned right around 10. Just tune the signal generator till we hear it. Hear the hum. So there's definitely a low frequency hum of some significance because I'm using a fairly small speaker and I can I can hear it. I just put my hand on the speaker to see if I can feel it, but I can't. Let's just see. Whoop. Oh. <laughs> vibration there. So that the hum just completely disappears. Is that the intermodulation hum already? Okay, let's tune in the signal generator. Okay. I'd say there's a hum there right now. Same hum now. So I've heard this intermodulation hum problem. I, I've had it. There's a, there's a uh, let's be another station right there. Let's just tune up a little bit. I'd say that's a quiet spot. modulation on there. Okay. No capacitor. Uh, the hum just completely disappears. Hum is back. I, I don't think it's that intermodulation hum that we're hearing. I think it's more like a, just a general hum. Some sparks flying on that capacitor lead. That sounds fantastic now. Yeah, I, I'm just zero on. Let me try reversing the plug now. Uh, once again, nothing is grounded. These are floating. Everything is safe. Hunky dory. Okay, we'll flip it around. Let's see if there's any difference here. Passer is not connected, and I don't hear the hum. Connect the capacitor. Well, we're talking about the low, nice sine wave type hum, as opposed to this buzzy thing that you can hear now that does disappear. If we tune off. Drop in volume. This is picking up a, a ton of stuff. It's got basically no antenna on it. It's just a loop of wire here shorting the antenna input. That's amazing. This is either one hot radio or a where these are all interference signals. Okay, let's get back to finding the signal generator. Where'd it go? I can't recognize it.
disconnect. Connect. Disconnect. I don't hear anything happen. In fact, now the volume's up. So that hum is uh, uh, exists without the volume. As soon as you turn up some program material coming from the radio, you can't hear any of this stuff anyway. I used to fix my car that way quite regularly. I'd be driving down the road and my wife would say, well, what's that funny noise in our car? And I'd say, oh, I can fix that. And I'd just turn the radio up higher. Flip it around again. Guys, there's too many noises in my shop here. So when I have the uh, have it plugged in the proper way, I apply the capacitor, there is a noise that remains, a hum that remains. When I put it in the incorrect way, if we can call it that, silence. So the, the, the approach of putting the live line So, uh, put, putting the uh, the grounded line to the switch seems to be a better option here. Well, what's the problem with doing that? Why, why? I don't understand why it would be that way. It's, it doesn't make common sense to me. You think, well, the live line is the one that's going to have problems, and the grounded line, well, that's grounded. I mean, uh, how much signal can be on it? That's that's probably just really stupid thinking. I don't know. Something's not adding up here for me. Well, you know what? I'm not going to put the uh, polarized plug on it yet. I'm going to continue on. I'm going to leave, leave this like this so I can do more testing because maybe ideas are going to come down the road. Uh, better, better ways to, to test this guy out a bit. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Strange stuff. Uh, now th again, I'm fiddling around with a radio with a big transformer in it. This is not the hot chassis problem that exists with five tube radios that do not have a transformer and all the tubes are in series. That's another kettle of fish. There's a few versions of that. There's a version of those radios which is kind of similar to this, where the radio circuitry is isolated away from the cabinet but they still have to put in a capacitor, just like this one. But then there's other 5-tube radios where the chassis is hooked up to one side of the line, and one way or another you can get a shock off that, a bad shock off that. Yeah, huh. okay, uh, more, more, more to understand here, I think. Okay, I suggest you stick your fingers in your ears for this, not because it's going to be a loud sound, because your brain is going to leak out of your head when I show you this. Well, that's a pretty good introduction, I hope this, this goes. So I got this on AC, I thought, hey, with this capacitor off, what kind of voltage is on this cabinet anyway? Well, oh, did you see what just happened? Look, I got one lead in the air. 28 volts out of the blue. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ground this lead to the uh, power system neutral ground. We're now I'm going to measure the voltage on the chassis. 268 volts. Ooh la wee. Anybody care to touch that? Now again, it's 268 volts. You know what, you know what this might be saying? This might be the result of the capacitive effect effects in the power transformer now I'm pretty sure if I if I just push that capacitor on there that voltage will disappear but uh, 
Let's see if I can do it here. This is how people get electrocuted. Boom. Doesn't disappear. Falls way down. I still get a reading though. This is plugged in the the incorrect way. <laughs> if I can call it that. Okay, I am now going to reverse this plug. Plug it in the recommended way. Commonly recommended way. Mr. Internet recommends the way this is now. What, what do we get now? What do we get on that chassis? Well, we still get a wild reading, but it could be that, you know, the capacitance that we're fiddling with here is the internal capacitance and the windings of the primary and secondary in here and who, who knows what else. The radio's on, by the way. And it would have to be on for all this to happen. So, some of the high voltage generated by the power transformer is being coupled back to the chassis. And the chassis is floating. It's not grounded to anything in any way. That's scary. You know, I just see numbers like 250 and 168 here. Even if, oh, let, let's try this voltage reading now. Yeah. Is this the proper way? One sixty nine is a very interesting number, by the way. One hundred. Really? That means there's a hundred dropping across that. What is that? Is that dropping across that capacitor? What what is that? 169 is the peak voltage uh, in an outlet. Uh, at a nominal peak voltage, actually 169 volts. That's why you can have five tube radios, and they can develop uh, B pluses of 130, 140 volts when they're plugged into 115 volts. Where how do they manage to get this higher voltage? Uh, because the it is actually a higher voltage, the peak voltage actually 169. Probably just a coincidence though. Can't imagine it's anything other than that. Uh, it just gets spookier and spookier. It's weirder and weirder. It gets curiouser and curiouser. Well, I think I'm going to end the video here. Um, got enough stuff here to cook cook for the rest of the, of the day. And uh, tomorrow, just carry on. I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, maybe carry on with some other things and not worry about this for a while. And come back to it later. Looks like I should solder that capacitor in uh, for safety's sake. 200 and something volts. Wow. Okay, well, thanks so much for watching so far. Um, don't know where this is going. It's going somewhere. See ya.